I'm really delighted to be asked uh, 20 years uh, on to come and say a few words about our friend and our comrade, uh, Martin Doggerty. As Desi said, he was a Finglass man. He was born in 1958 in Dublin from a, a, a very big family, not to say a bit like myself. And he was a Dubliner. You know, in Belfast, is quite a long while away, and so is the border. And he could have chosen uh, to stay in Dublin, to have a different life, to be stunned, maybe in this crowd or some other crowd with a, a family and grandchildren and all the rest of it. But it wasn't the type of guy he was. What he uh, couldn't leave it to somebody else. He saw an injustice. He loved his country. He looked upon his country as the whole of the country. And when he saw things were going wrong, then he couldn't leave it up to somebody else to lead. He went and led himself, which is a sign of his... Uh, of his very short life, and he led from the front. And I doing so, of course, he ended up in jail, as many do, in Port Lease in 1982, and he was there in 1988. What did he do when he got back out again? He had another chance to live an ordinary life, uh, but instead he reported straight back uh, to the IRA. And of course, it's, it's worth saying that in any struggle, in any conflict, it is always a minority and that's probably the way it should be, who take up arms and who take that responsibility. And Dabo was one of the people uh, who did that. And this time he took the war to the heart of Britain. He was in jail there in 1990 for a year. And uh, as, as Desi says, you know, he, he died very young. But if he had got to this age, or if he got to, you know, the age of 80, he can still we can still look back on his life and realize that he did a powerful amount. He might as well have lived till he was 80 years of age uh, in his short life. And of course, again, and uh, Des will do as much better than I did, uh, he gave his life uh, protecting other people. And many people, probably quite a lot of them, are uh, standing here today. I could have been dead if he hadn't taken the action that he did on the 21st of May. 1994 to protect people and that of course didn't surprise anybody and um, that's the type of person that he was I only met him a few times and I don't know his thoughts and I say this all the time and I'm trying to remember fallen comrades you know I don't know what they would have said if they were starting here today hard to do I mean I remember this is 20 years ago I remember starting in that hill there uh, watching the, the funeral but there's a few things I do know. I know that those who lived after his death and who were Republican, their duty was to take up the mantle. And many people in this, in this crowd uh, did that. And they were to carry on a struggle, and we are continuing to carry on that struggle. But we're not doing it as if it's 1916 or 1798 or 1969 or even 88 or 2008. We're doing it with the skills and with the tools and with the ability, I would say the genius that is respected throughout the world of Republicans. We use what we have at any given time, and this is 2014, to carry on that struggle. We are in an entirely new phase uh, of struggle, but we have exactly the same goal as Martin. I'm going to say I don't know what his thoughts were or any other comrade who have given their lives I have to say this, I don't know any Republican today who couldn't have a frog in the throat uh, burst in their heart for the type of result that this generation of Republicans, I couldn't walk through this crowd without falling over a councillor, did in Dublin. I mean massive, absolutely unbelievable throughout the country, but Dublin, the capital city of our country, Sinn Féin put up 38 candidates and got 34. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Who would not have the pride going beyond Ireland and Lynn Boylan getting 83,264 votes, which is double, which is the Fine Gael and Labour put together? Who could not have that pride? I feel it when I'm from Belfast. Of over 260 councils throughout the country, 
with the largest party in Dublin and Belfast and Derry and Cork and somewhere else which I forgot. <laughs> in Dublin, we elected 11 women. Still a lot of work to be done there, but a great move forward in terms of in terms of that. And of course, we have four MEPs throughout the country, representing every single county uh, in our country. So this didn't come by accident. If you want to look back 20 years and you want to talk about Martin Dockley and other people who gave their lives, then what they were fighting for was this path. They were on the same road, the same route, the route map towards United Ireland. And what this generation did, and I've seen many, many young people at Waxford, and I see many of them here today, I've seen them in candidates, the new generation of people with the new ideas, but the same commitment are going to move us massively forward. This period, I think, like the hunger strike, like other periods, will be seen as a watershed in our march towards a united Ireland. And the publicans, you know, when I say we didn't get here as, a, as an accident, you know, people didn't just wake up one morning and think we want to vote Republican. They're listening to what we're saying, they're watching people on the ground, they know that Republicans work hard, they know that they live with other people and not in some, some other, other place. They know that the issues of housing, of the water charges, of austerity, of jobs, of the property tax and all the rest of the issues which are affecting ordinary people, working class people, people who have work, uh, low incomes, all of that. They know that we are out there, that we not only are part of it, but we know that that's happening to our families as well, and that's, that's why we're out there fighting it. So there is no miracle in the United Ireland. Whoever said there was. We have to prepare for it. We are preparing for it. And this year, I think, will be remembered as a culmination of people realizing, many, many thousands, we're almost a half a million people realizing that we're uh, going to get there and that the Ireland that we're talking about is a different Ireland. It is an Ireland which will make a difference to ordinary people and that's the way it should be. Not some mythical island, but an Ireland which people know that they're moving into which will make a difference to their lives. But we know what we're up against. It is the famous carnival of reaction. And the last few days in the north shows you the type of people that we're up against. I mean, it's an absolute disgrace, uh, the attitudes of the people, whom, by the way, we still have to share this island with, the racism and sectarianism that has come out in the last few days. And of course, in the last few years, looking down here, I don't have to tell you, you've had all this during the election, I'm not going to repeat it, uh, the type of damage which has been done to the very core of Irishness and Ireland. And we're there with the alternative, and we're there to make, to make the difference. So the other parties, what they used to call the main parties, might be all shooting off to the right. They have a big problem. The people aren't shooting off to the right with them. The people are not following them because they know they're going the wrong direction. Our Republicans, our representatives, have a vision of a new Ireland, a united Ireland which enhances people's lives. Now Martin was a volunteer, and I think, in the midst of all this, and remembering that he gave his life uh, for other people, and that's what I think defines his life in the end. I think it's also important to say that he was an ordinary person, came from a working class area, came from a big family, you know, would have been comfortable in this, in this uh, crowd today, uh, talking about somebody else. But he was also an extraordinary person because he lived in extraordinary, in extraordinary times. And as I said at the first, he could have decided to continue on in an ordinary way. But his choice was to help others who needed help. And that's what made him uh, extraordinary. Now, people have their personal memories of him. And, you know, there's a, a, a function on tonight. People will be sitting around tables. They'll be talking the crack about him, and they won't all be uh, praised. You know, he was a human being. Uh, I'm sure he had foibles the same as everybody else, but it'll be good crack. It'll be people talking about the personal knowledge they have of him, and that's the real commemoration, and that's the real memory uh, of, of Martin. But all his actions, all his actions were political. And when they're trying to rewrite history, and when they're trying to talk about the conflict, and when they're trying to turn things around, and when they're talking about legacy, always remember that it was people like Marching, like Martin, like Dapo, 
who made a difference, who made what we're doing today, who made the next generation uh, the capability of them is to move our struggle on from where we are now. He was part of bringing that about. So we're here to remember, we're here to celebrate, but also, Sam at the graveside of Martin, we're here to rededicate ourselves. He was an inspiration uh, to us all. He continues to be that inspiration. The fact that this is 20 years ago and such a crowd turned out uh, to celebrate uh, his life speaks for itself. So let me finish with this. We are a risen people. We will continue to be a risen people and onwards and upwards from here. Go to Milamayogo.